Goodwood Festival of Speed is a car enthusiast's heaven. You would be hard up to find anyone who wouldn't have it on their bucket list. And for me, it's an event I've dreamt about since I was a kid. It is no doubt one of the most prestigious car festivals in the world, where cars of any genre and age that have a connection with racing get to tackle the hill climb, which is basically the Duke of Richmond's driveway. He's a pretty cool dude. Now, I find myself 17,000 kilometres from home and staring at the iconic Goodwood House. Yep, I've made it. This year, there are two reasons to celebrate. It is the festival's Silver Jubilee and Porsche's 70th anniversary, and 200 odd thousand people are here to witness it all. Without a cloud in sight and at around 26 degrees, most people slip, slop, slap, but some don't. There is enough red skin to make the Ferrari paddock look pale. The 52 meter high Porsche feature provides some shade in the heat of the afternoon. I go for a wander through the pit area and spot a crowd of people with pens and posters at the ready surrounding a driver. It's German World Rally Championship driver Walter Rahl, who has the fifth most amount of championship wins of all time. He's signing autographs on the roof of his beige Porsche 356 Carrera. It was my car which I have used uh, four weeks ago by the Mille Miglia event. A very fantastic car. The engine is going really well. And I think that is uh, maybe not the right car now to, to go to the hill climb because you have not enough power. But anyway, it's, it's, it's nice to, to drive this car. Parked right next to his 356 is the car that started it all for the brand, the 1948 Porsche number no. 1. Some very special, the first Porsche ever built, yeah. that is something for... What is Walter's most memorable win of his career? In my rally career, my dream was and my aim was to win one time Rally Monte Carlo. And the first victory, it was something very special, yeah. you know? like. Finally, I was lucky, I was winning it four times, but the first one was, that was the maximum. The 1992 24-hour Nürburgring race saw heavy rain and fog, but as Walter explains, it didn't slow him down. Yeah, it was, finally the car was running perfectly, we had no technical problem, we just fill in petrol and go, and finally we finished seventh overall, which was with this car, you wow. can't believe it. And we get a special prize for the shortest time in the, in the pit lane from all cars. We have only two drivers and it, it's quite hard, you know, you have no time to sleep. And then on the finish line, I went out of the car, put out my overall, was sitting in my private car and was going home 1,200 kilometers. At this time, you know, World Championship rallies have been 5,000 kilometers. And I was used to stay 40 hours behind the steering wheel. Being on his back doorstep, he has a strong connection with the Nürburgring. That is so unique. That is, yeah. it is the most interesting road in the world. You know, we have jumps, we have compression. The, the road is hanging outside. The road is signed. It is perfectly. For me, that is something, if I have a choice to win one time 24 hours of Nürburgring, it's better than 10 times in Le Mans. Attention paddock, attention paddock. We'd like to remind everybody that the only smoke in the paddock should be wafting across from the hill climb. Smoking and vaping is completely forbidden in the paddock and around the assembly area. So if you happen to be doing it right now, we'd really appreciate it if you'd stop. From the pits, past Goodwood House and through the concourse area, I arrive at the first glance paddock, giving the crowd a chance to see new cars not previously seen in public. One of the most popular is the 2019 Toyota Supra. <laughs> Chief Engineer Tetsuya Tata. When customer has a uh, uh, drive it, I don't need any word. Everybody easy to understand. <laughs> how happy and how interesting. Yeah, because so, uh, everything has to say as you write. So uh, before started this project, I had many chance to interview all super fun in the world. Uh, why is the most item must succeed? So super element. Everybody say cost six engine with turbo. Attention, product, attention, product. 
This is pretty much a last call for any more cars and drivers that are down to take part in the time shootout. If you don't get down to the assembly area, you won't be allowed to play. To where all the action is, the hill climbs straight and Terry Grant is breaking his previous quickest mile record on two wheels in the Land Rover Sport SVR. The crowd cheer as the orange V8 powered SUV drives past and they look to the screen to see him nearly tip the car over. He smashes his previous record by a massive 30 seconds. Attention paddock, with the ACU chief scrutiny there, please return to the bike shelters for the fast as his legs will carry him. Another first for Goodwood this year is the first autonomous car on the hill climb, the Siemens 1965 Ford Mustang. Automotive engineer James Brighton from Cranfield University helped with the project and is the driver this weekend. We've wrapped the original paint so it's now in this, uh, in this Siemens colour and that's really to try and um, commemorate the 25th anniversary of Goodwood Festival of Speed. What we were trying to do was a, as a, was a sort of unique project uh, in a very short space of time to say look let's look back at the past and, and sort of old technology whilst also looking to the future and new technology and how can we kind of blend them together yep. um, because with all the new technology we can't just throw away everything that's old and of course we have a very um, we have a lot of passion for older cars and emotion mm. and all this sort of thing. We've also done it very, very quickly. So we got the car about a month ago. And so we put it all together in a month. And our first test run autonomous was on Thursday for the opening of the show. Really? Yeah. So you didn't get any chance to test it for the We tested it. With, so we have our own test track at Cranfield University. Yeah. And so we tested it there. Mm. But of course, that's not the same as this as, yes. as this environment at all. H how did it go? Um, the first one was very good. The second run didn't go very well yep. um, because we had a problem with the power steering, the mechanical part of the old Mustang. This had an early power steering system still fitted, uh, which was a carryover from the Thunderbird. Whilst we inspected it all before we came, uh, one of the hydraulic hoses was uh, so the, the kind of hydraulic hose that, that connects the pump down to the, the valve block. Mm had a plastic sheath around it to protect it and interestingly it was underneath that the original pipe had perished and it blew all the oil out oh. and so basically when we got a top there's a there's a very funny picture of us nearly hitting a bale <laughs> unfortunately the shot that the photographer got looks like we absolutely creamed the bale but in actual fact we didn't because didn't. as it went to the bale it was actually turning left and so we just brushed along one corner yeah. so so in actual fact and you would correct it manually too if you knew yeah, it was exactly, going to crash yeah. and, and we, we we pull it back anyway so yeah. um, so no so we have we, we did have a problem but then friday went very well yesterday went very well so you know i mean we've worked 24 7 doing it obviously so i mean it's not it's not we really haven't put an immense amount of time in but we haven't had that much time to do it paddock, paddock. we'd like to remind everybody that smoking and vaping in the paddock and assembly areas is strictly forbidden so if you could take a quick look to your left and to your right, and if you see anybody smoking or vaping, please point at them and say, oh, stop it. A short one minute stroll to the most popular area of Goodwood, it's the supercars paddock. As the name suggests, the world's hottest supercars are on show. With cars from Ferrari, Pagani, Aston Martin, Lotus, Lamborghini and much, much more, by midday you are craning your head through the people to get a good look. David Brabham, the son of the great Sir Jack, is here driving the Brabham BT62. We are sitting on two deck chairs, staring at the rear of the car he helped create. My vision started 12 years ago um, when I was still racing and I was thinking, okay, what do I do when I'm 50? So uh, it was all about turning an iconic racing name into a brand, but how the hell was I gonna do it? 12 years ago, I had no idea. So yeah. I went through a, a, a difficult period of trying to get the name back under our control because someone in Germany had registered Brabham and Brabham Racing and so I ended up going through a kind of seven year battle to get that back. So I couldn't do anything with the name until I owned it. So were, were Germany planning to do something with it or they just... Oh they, 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 by time we we found out about them was literally not long before they were launching a, a car called the Brabham. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, they did launch it, but they were, we were obviously involved in a legal battle over the name, and I uh, I won in the end. During that that period, it's okay. What do we do? How do we do it? We want to go racing, but need something more around just a race team than. Mm. You know, to, to make it sustainable. So, how what does that look like? And then you talk to different people and partners. You go down so many different roads and lots of dead ends, of mm. course. Till I met um, Fusion Capital in in Adelaide, which we were introduced by a mutual friend. They've they've been involved in uh, advanced manufacturing, um, supplying to Holden for, for many years. So, what is it like to drive? It's a fast car. It's light. It's powerful. Um, 972 kilos dry weight, uh, 700 horsepower, Brabham 5.4 litre V8. Uh, it's got good, good, reasonable amount of downforce, about 1,200 kilos. So the car sticks to the ground pretty well. Um, I was just actually watching a video of a passenger with their head moving from side to side and forwards, just from the G-forces and. Uh, uh, with a big grin on her face as well, but yeah, yeah no, it's uh, it's it's built really to, to demand more of the driver to challenge them because it's a, it'll be a step up from what most people are used to, and uh, we'll have a driver development program to help them do that. What would your dad think? Oh, he'd be yeah, he'd be yeah. pretty chuffed actually. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. He knew he went, you know, he knew I went through the struggle with the court case and mm. got that, and he was obviously happy that I I did did it, and then trying to evolve and find a way of getting it out there and um, it's a shame you know he and my mum's not around to, to yeah. see it but uh, we, we're carrying on that legacy yeah. we're celebrating 70 years this year of, of Brabham we're, we're now starting the new journey of the next 70. Attention paddock, attention paddock we'd like to ask all competitors to remain in their paddock shelters until the end of play this evening so if all competitors remain in their paddock shelters until we're done That'd be A 10 minute walk from the supercars paddock is the impressive McLaren house and the Senna and new 600 LT are crowd favourites. Darren Goddard is McLaren Automotive's Vehicle Engineering Director. We were working on the 600 LT for around two years. In, in terms of the concept, we, we had an idea what the car would be look like when we, when we set up the, uh, the 570 but the, the proper design development work started about two years ago. What does he think of its sound? I personally think, even from idle through, um, you know, obviously I can't talk about Ultimate Series, but it's, it's the most impressive thing that we've done, without a doubt, in Sports Series. You know, the idle quality is great when you're really on it. The fact that it's right behind your head yes. helps. <laughs> transmits beautifully into the, into the uh, cabin. We were just down in the sports car paddock and he started it up, let it warm up for a minute or two and we were shooting flames into one of your banners actually. <laughs> and crowds of people around. So I think the sound is um, is what it needs to be. Rob Melville is the design director at McLaren Automotive. Personally speaking, pen and paper is still my favourite. I live like a biro and just a sketchbook. And you can you know, do loads and loads of little doodles and sketches and just... Yep. A real, a real brain dump. You're not thinking too much. You almost get into this zone of sounds really uh, arty, but like almost like a bit of a, tr like a trance. Yeah. You're, you're just in a zone. You're sketching away, and and you and it feels great. It, it really does. It, it feels you're not analysing it as such. You just have a picture in your head, and you're just trying to capture it and some ideas, yep. maybe like glazing, how you production of components and panels, and some sculptural element around the face. Um, so pen and paper is my personal preference. I often take that straight to the computer, like the whole design team was sketching digitally. When Rob sees a McLaren on the road he helped design, he gets pretty excited. I can, I can say, like a big kid, I mean, I can literally, we could be driving around like Windsor as we go shopping on the way home. I might see a 675 LT or something. And then my, my, my kid's like, dad, 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 you know, check the car out. And it's like, it's a McLaren. So they're super enthusiastic and super proud. Um, obviously my wife is as well and um, so, and I am as well I mean I'm a, I'm a car fan we're all car fans at McLaren Attention paddock we're still getting reports of people smoking in the paddock area it's a bit silly on such a hot dry day with plenty of flammable material around so please extinguish the cigarettes and put the vape back in your pocket Amanda McLaren is a McLaren ambassador and yes 
that name is familiar. She is the daughter of the man behind the name Bruce McLaren. She was only four when her father was sadly killed testing one of his cars at Goodwood in 1970. She reflects on the moment when she realised her dad was famous. Even though I was sort of brought up with them and around them and, and all our family friends were racing drivers, my first real recollection was not until I was 10 years old and I was at the British Grand Prix and the late great James Hunt was driving for McLaren and I think at least three quarters of the girls at my school had a poster of James Hunt on their bedroom wall as did I mm -hmm. and I went back to school on the Monday morning having met James at the British Grand Prix and all these girls eyes came out on stalks and they all started asking all these questions and a few of them said oh but doesn't he drive for a car company called McLaren and your surname is McLaren and I said yes and sort of drew myself up very proudly and said my father founded the team that he now drives for and then I realized that was all I knew so I went back home and very sheepishly started poking around in the cupboards and my mother had a huge collection of motor racing books and she still got a lot of motoring journals from the UK and the US and I started reading and I started asking questions and I started taking actual notice of the cars um, so yes thank you James <laughs> for that sort of light bulb moment um, and since then I really started following the Formula One team rather than just kind of hanging around and then when Clown Automotive started making the road cars um, that was really the icing on the cake for me because that was going to be my father's next plan for Bruce McLaren Motor Racing back in, in, in the late 60s and that was what he was going to do next. And Amanda is certainly a fan of Goodwood. When the British weather shines on us yes. it is the most incredible event. I mean it, it's you've got a beautiful English stately home with the driveway and then they turn it into a hill climb and they put all this and the first time I came here when it wasn't the Goodwood Festival of Speed I kind of looked around and I thought wow doesn't it look different really it's, yeah because it's fields with sheep um, <laughs> there's actually but, sheep even there's no they're actually sheep they're, they're with sheep um, okay. um, so you've got the most incredible range of cars here. You've got the little old Harrods van with a top speed of 15 miles an hour that was built in 1901 in the paddock over there. And then you've got, you know, McLaren Senna in here. You've got a paddock out there full of heritage race cars from every genre of, of motorsport. You've got all the corporate stands with all their latest and greatest and some of their, you know, on the mini stand they've got the cute little old minis which I just love yes. and, and you've got the best of everything. I mean my mother until she died came to every single one from the first one to through to sort of four years wow. ago. And, and whenever we've been in the UK and my husband and I when we planned a holiday from New Zealand to the UK it would be over this weekend <laughs> so that we could come to the Goodwood Festival because we just love it. Attention Paddock, attention Paddock, we'd like to invite all of the extremely excited drivers and their cars to the assembly area. Thank you. Back to the supercars paddock and I'm putting a race helmet on now and climbing into a bright green McLaren 570S Spider. In the driver's seat is European Le Mans and Dubai 24-hour champion Ollie Webb. I'm about to go for a ride up the 1.8 kilometre hill climb on a truly incredible driving experience that one can only dream of. Driving out of the supercars paddock in front of a crowd, Ollie gives the 570S a squirt. It's a slow drive to the start line as nearly the entire supercars field line up. What is that green thing? Oh, that is a one of one privately commissioned V8 engined smart car style <gasps> Aston Martin. <laughs> no way! It's got V8 in it, it sounds insane. <laughs> <laughs> The 600 LT is in front of us. This one's actually really good because it's got like a rolling burnout mode. Really? So that, that one can actually do a big burnout as well. Wow. Wow. Yeah, good 
good, isn't it? We get waved up to the start line. Ready to go. is all over far too quickly. My heart is pounding through my chest and a goofy grin is plastered all over my face. We arrive at the end of the road and park up with the rest of the supercars before we make our way back down the hill climb but at a much slower pace. It's Sunday afternoon on the last day and a huge crowd is mingling for the parade of the Porsches underneath the Porsche feature. A lady hands out Porsche flags as Mark Webber is the first to appear driving the Porsche number one. Around 20 cars line up as loud music is blasted through the speakers, two giant flags unfurl over Goodwood House and fireworks fill the blue sky. It is a perfect way to end a memorable weekend of some magnificent machinery and driving. You come here to hear cars roar past you, to observe them from every angle and to talk to the driver behind the car. If you have never been, Goodwood Festival of Speed will exceed your expectations and so much more. Till next year.